Hello everyone, welcome to pre crash course for competitive exams held by Virat Hindustan Sangam in association with Manifest IAS Bengaluru. So this program is inspired by Dr. Subramanya Swami and it is convened by, convened by Sri Ravi Sankar Sir, State Education Convener, VHS Karnataka and President of Good Neighbors India, NGO. So I am the Chief Mentor of your program. So this is my name, Danush Kumar. I have been mentoring civil service aspirants for past five years. Okay, so this program is held online. It was inaugurated on 28 January. So you can watch this program every day on the YouTube channel of Virat Hindustan Sangam as well as the YouTube channel of Udya News Karnataka. And also you can join our uh, Telegram channel for free mentoring. So here is the link of our Telegram channel. Okay, this is your timetable along with syllabus. So we have started with polity and next we are going to take up history. So here is the link of the telegram channel and also you can join by scanning this QR code. So that will help for your doubts clearing and concepts clearing. So you can directly message us. So how to make the best use of these classes? So Senior aspirants can use this as a revision course and freshers can use this as, use this to get, get insights into the syllabus and clearing of the critical concepts. Okay, let's begin the class. So today we are going to discuss, we are, we are going to begin with the concept of tribunals. So what are tribunals? Tribunals are nothing but codes of a different sort. So they are not a full fledged codes, but have all the attributes of court. Okay, in the tribunals there is one uh, peculiar uh, peculiar thing where uh, not only the judges, even executive can be part of the tribunal. So you have a debt recovery trib tribunal, national company law tribunal, central administrative tribunal, state administrative tribunal, telecom dispute uh, appellate tribunal, TDSAT. So, many other tribunals. So there are not only uh, even the National Green Tribunal, not only the members from judiciary, but even executive that is expert members or technical members can also be present. So what are the constitutional provisions when it comes to tribunals? So tribunals comes under part 14a, they come under part 14a. So two articles are important when it comes to tribunal. What are the two articles? 323A and 323B. So please remember these two articles. They are very important when it comes to tribunals. Okay. So 323A, the first article talks about administrative tribunals. So what are administrative tribunals? Suppose a uh, a civil servant or a government servant is having some issues like uh, he might be uh, transferred or he might be suspended or he might be penalized or his promotion might be withheld. Any issues with respect to the uh, government servants or civil servants, he can approach the uh, administrative tribunals. So, Article 323 enables the parliament to uh, take out the adjudication of disputes relating to the admin, uh, service matters relating to service matters that is government service and give it to administrative tribunals. So how many tribunals are there? So when it comes to administrative tribunals, we have central administrative tribunal and state administrative tribunal. So central administrative tribunal, it, when, it, when was it set up? It was set up in 1985 was set up in the year 1985. Okay. So it has uh, 17 regular benches, that is 17 benches at different places. Okay. So the CAT exercises, so the CAT exercises original jurisdiction in, in relation to recruitment and service matters, service matters of public servants covered by it. Original jurisdiction means what? So the civil servants who are covered by it, mostly the central government employees and all India service employees, uh, they uh, with respect to 
these employees they can directly approach the tribunal when, with respect to their service matters so they need not go through the state administrative tribunal that is what is meant by original jurisdiction so cat exercises original ju jurisdiction with respect to these uh, employees so cat is a multi member body it's not a single member body it is a multi member body okay so the appointment of members of cat is uh, how how is the appointment uh, made for the central administrative tribunal it is based on a committee committee chaired by sup, uh, sitting judge of a supreme court sitting judge of a supreme court makes the recommendation via his, his or her committee so what is the special thing about cat cat is not lay, uh, not, not bound by the Pro procedure laid down in the C uh, civil procedure code that is it uh, so it is based on principles of natural justice so civil procedure code deals with civil matters how the proceedings has to be carried with respect to civil issues criminal procedure code deals with how the uh, prosecution has to be carried out in criminal issues so what is the difference between crpc and apc crpc that is criminal procedure code deals with the conduct of trial in the courts how the trial has to be conducted however uh, the uh, penal code penal code is uh, comes at the end so what does the penal code do it uh, based on the crime it is going to penalize penalize the convict that is the difference between crpc and ipc similarly even uh, when it comes to administrative tribunal it is not criminal it is civil civil offense uh, civil matters so it is not bound by civil procedure code what it is bound by it is bound by principles of natural justice natural principle of natural justice means there is no bound for the tribunal it can uh, it can uh, conduct the proceedings based on uh, based on the uh, ground realities not based on the procedure laid down in the book okay so this is with respect to the central so with respect to uh where does the appeals from cat lie it lies to the respective high court earlier it was only supreme court however in the chandra kumar case in the chandra kumar case 1937 the appeal was made to the appeal can be also be laid before uh, the high court respective high court next next comes the topic of state administrative tribunals so similar to the central administrative tribunals we have state administrative tribunals at the every state so not every state so till now there are uh, sats that is state administrative tribunals have been set up in nine states only nine states okay so the chairman and so even uh, even the uh, state administrative uh, tribunals exercises original jurisdiction with respect to whom with respect to state government employees state government employees can directly go to sat no need not need not by any court need not go through any court directly any issue they have they can go to sat so the chairman and members are appointed by appointed appointed by president after consultation with the governor here there is no role for judiciary so it is the president executive who who appoints the that is the president who appoints the chairman and members of sat okay so there is also provision for joint administrative tribunal as well so uh, next comes uh, the topic of uh, tribunals for other matters other matters means other from administrative issues so uh, which is the article the article is 323b okay so what are the other matters the other matters may be taxation land reforms industry and uh, elections rent and tenancy rights and so many other issues okay so uh, this is with respect to the tribunals for other matters what is the difference between 323a and 323b difference what is the difference so the difference is Uh, one is administrative another is for other matters the second is 323a uh, tribunals can be established only by the parliament 
323b uh, tribunals can be established by both parliament and state legislature okay so 323a there is under 323a only one tribunal for center and one tribunal for state each for state however in 323b uh, many tribunals can be created okay so this is all with respect to the uh, concept of tribunals so let us now move to the next uh, topic that is subordinate courts the topic of subordinate courts subordinate court means what so we have supreme court we have high court so below this whichever court comes below this whichever court comes all of them are called subordinate subordinate courts so your district courts your municipal courts your jmfc your taluka courts sessions courts every and city civil court everything comes as a subordinate court okay so what are the constitutional provisions with respect to what are the constitutional provisions with respect to subordinate court so they are the uh, uh, dealt in the articles from 233 to 237 233 to 237 in which part in part number 6 part 6 of the constitution article 233 to 237 deals with subordinate courts so okay so first is uh, under the constitutional provisions first appointment of district judges how the district judges are appointed so every district has a district judge so the appointment is done by the governor with in consultation with whom the state high court governor does the appointment in consultation with state high court so what are the qualifications he should not be in a government service he should be in a advocate for 7 years so he should be have been recommended by high court for appointment so appointment of other judges apart from district judges so apart, apart from district judges whatever whoever the judges are appointed it is called judicial service so here the appointment is done by the governor it is done by the governor after consultation with state public service commission as well as high court district judge only high court other judges i mean uh, the judicial office so it is state uh, high court as well as state public uh, service commission control over subordinate courts so the control over district and subordinate courts is uh, exercised by which court high court the respective court exercises the uh, uh, jurisdiction or sub, uh, jurisdiction or control over the subordinate courts so district court uh, so in the district level it is called district court when it comes to city cities like metropolitan cities like bengaluru it is called city civil court or city civil court okay so district judge also means so this question was asked in uh, kpsc kpsc 2000 which the exam which was held in uh, conducted in 2020 august 24 so what does the expression district judge means district judge the expression means a judge of civil city civil court that judge is also called district judge additional district judge the joint district judge assistant district judge chief judge chief judge of a small cause court chief presidency magistrate additional chief presidency magistrate sessions judge additional sessions judge and assistant judge all of them can be equated to the expression district judge okay so next is structure and jurisdiction structure and jurisdiction of subordinate courts so the uh, organization of these courts that is subordinate courts how they are organized it depends on the state to state the states decide the state government decide so they differ from state to state broadly broadly it is be, before hc it is sorry before i co i court it is district court or sessions court so a judge is called a district judge when he deals with civil matters he is called a sessions judge when he deals with criminal matters right so before this we have we have 
at the lower level we have civil side we have subordinate judge court and munsip court civil side civil side we have subordinate judge court and munsif court munsif court okay at the criminal side we have jmfc so we have jmc chief judicial magistrate court and judicial magistrate court at the criminal side we have chief judicial magistrate court and judicial magistrate court so this is the broad organization need not be the same across the states okay the district judge is the highest authority in the district in the district is the highest judicial authority so the district judge when he acts as a uh, on the criminal uh, cri when he acts with the criminal cases uh, he judge, adjudicates the criminal cases is called a sessions judge and he can award even the death sentence so however lower level courts cannot award death sentence it is only the prerogative of sessions judge who can award the uh, death sentence okay so this is the broad organization in some metropolitan cities there are city civil courts i already said that on the civil side and metropolitan magistrates on the civil side we have city civil courts and metropolitan magistrates magistrate metropolitan magistrate on which side criminal side okay this is broadly with respect to subordinate courts what are the articles i already told it start it's from 233 to 237 national legal services authority so your nalsa favorite expression nalsa national legal service authority so it is called nalsa so where is the origin article 39a article 39a added by a constitutional amendment act uh, what does it say it says free legal aid to the poor free legal aid so it starts with starts from there when was the national legal authority uh, formed so it was formed in 1987 1987 by national legal service authority act national legal service authority national legal service authority act 1987 okay so so uh, we have national legal service authority likewise we have uh, state legal service authority at the high courts we have district legal Ath service authority at the district level and also taluk legal service authority at the taluk level so what do they do they provide free legal aid for the poor and needy those who cannot afford a, afford to pay for, pay for a lawyer so here are the broad functions free and competent legal service they also organize lok adalats what is lok adalat i am going to talk in further talk further so so they also organize legal awareness camps so these uh, nalsa or state or district or taluk legal service authority they organize free legal uh, awareness camps okay so who are the persons eligible so here women and children are eligible Uh, members of st 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 community victims of mass disaster so all of them are eligible so wh what does the free legal aid includes it includes payment of court fee process fee and other charges so also providing service of lawyers and many other things so next comes the concept of lok adalat what is the meaning of lok adalat adalat means what in hindi adalat means court lok adalat means people's court okay so it it has a origin in ancient india in ancient india we see in the movies and all there is there used to be panchayats the panchayats used to adjudicate the disputes and punish the culprits so uh, this has origin in the ancient india so it is called people's court it is based on gandhian principles gandhi the uh, and we says each village to be a republic each village to be a republic right so what happens um these people courts uh, they are also they also come under alternative dispute resolution so what are the alternative dispute resolution mechanisms adrs so we have courts generally we have courts if we decide the dispute outside the courts 
it is called alternative dispute resolution there are four mechanism one is a negotiation mediation conciliation and one more thing is there arbitration so arbitration negotiation mediation and conciliation so lok adalats also fall under the alternative dispute resolution mechanism okay so here it is a easy way of settling the disputes so how what is the function so so it is a alternative to judicial justice so they develop, they de deliver what do they do they deliver informal cheap and expeditious justice so they deliver informal cheap and fast justice so what they do so every uh, lok adalat will be uh, organized every now and then so in this lok adalat a judge a judicial officer will sit and on the other side one social ser servant will sit and one more person will be there so there will be no provision for legal representation there are no lawyers in this so the person suppose i am a Uh, so i have i have a grievance so i have a grievance against other person both of us will be called in front of the lok adalat so what are the types of cases so the cases are generally check bounds case petty cases so all these cases will be decided by the lok adalat so um, per day lakhs of case will be decided by the lok adalat whenever they are held all over the country okay so what is the statutory status so statutory status for lok adalat do we have a statutory backing yes we have statutory backing in the form of legal services authority act national legal services authority act that is 1987 provides the statutory backing so every local adalat uh, sir uh, consist of a uh, judicial officer serving or retired judicial officers okay so it may also consider uh, a, judi a uh, lawyer and a social worker so a lawyer is not a representative lawyer but a general lawyer who is impartial so it has jurisdiction over any case be pending before a court and any matter that is uh, within the jurisdiction of court and now that is so two cases once uh, those cases which have already entered the already in uh, in the entered the court proceedings they have uh, they can be brought to the lok adalat and also those cases and also those cases which are yet to go to the court those can also be brought to the lok adalat so various matters family disputes land land disputes labor disputes uh, check bonds cases and housing finance cases consumer grievance cases electricity matters telephone bills many of them are cleared by lok adalat okay so uh, once the parties agrees agree to the uh, resolution it is a kind of mediation so it is a kind of mediation so once the parties agrees so the, the dispute gets settled so if the uh, so what is the process the par parties uh, the both of them agree to get the settle uh, get the matter settled in lok adalat then the case comes to lok adalat or else even if one of the person wants to uh, get, go to the uh, lok adalat then also the uh, issue comes to the lok adalat or even the court court themselves can itself can refer the matter to lok adalat so three cases both of them come to lok adalat one of the party comes to lok adalat or the court refers the matter to lok adalat so what are the powers so they enforce the attendance and attendance of witnesses witnesses has to come and represent give witness and also they can uh, ask for any documents to be produced they can ask for evidence so many other things so similar to the court proceedings but in a flexible fashion so um, the the award of lok adalat is considered to be a decree of a civil court decree of a civil court it is equal to a civil court order okay so 
shall be final and binding so no appeal no appeal lies against the uh, lies against the order of the lok adalat no appeal can be made so what are the benefits of lok adalat what are the benefits one is there is no court fee it is free free of cost so then speedy trial we see today more than 3 crore cases are pending in various courts supreme court alone has 70000 pending cases so uh, these courts ensure speedy trials so the judges directly interact with the uh, people who are involved in the disputes there is no intermediary of lawyer okay so this is with respect to the lok adalat permanent lok adalat so can there be a permanent lok adalat so to have a permanent lok adalat legal services authorities act that is nalsa act was amended in 2002 the nalsa act was amended in 2002 to have a permanent lok adalat okay so what are the reasons for having a permanent lok adalat so one is a huge success of the concept of lok adalat that is the first reason okay so next is to provide free and competent legal service that is a another reason and also the it to increase the effectiveness of judicial system that is also a reason for uh, organizing permanent lok adalat so we have um, lok adalats for many things that is telecom bill dispute electric permanent lok adalat for telecom dispute electricity bill dispute so many other disputes even if you write one or two disputes more than enough even petty cases can be brought to the permanent lok adalat so what are the features features of permanent lok adalat features of permanent lok adalat so so it consists of a chairman chairman who is a judge or a who is a district judge so district judge can be the chairman so it can exercise jurisdiction with respect to public utility services public utility services that is what are the public utility services post telegraph to so, telegraph is not there now tele telephone power supply so water dispute many other things so the it decides disputes up to how much amount so the permanent lok adalat decides disputes up to 10 lakh rupees okay so compoundable offenses compoundable offenses means what compoundable offenses means uh, those uh, so Uh, compoundable means an offence where the parties can ag- come into a agreement, so they can settle the dispute. So by uh, for, by an agreement. What is it called? Suppose you have someone has cheated you of some let's say one lakh rupees. so you have filed a case so if the person comes to you and request that he please take back the case we i am going to pay the uh, amount so then you agree so compoundable means the uh, dispute can be agreed and settled among themselves no need for court proceedings those proceedings are called compoundable offenses okay so non non compoundable offenses means like crime murder and so those things there cannot be an agreement outside court it has to be tried in the court itself so non compoundable offenses cannot be brought to the lok adalat that is also a one of the features okay so every uh, award made by the permanent lok adalat is final and binding there cannot be an appeal in any court okay let's uh, next we'll move to the concept of family courts family courts means what which deals with family disputes inheritance divorce majorly divorce right okay marriage marriage family disputes uh, family affairs everything so family courts act there is an act so family courts act 1984 this is the act which forms the basis of family courts 
right family affairs so what are the reasons reasons for having a family court so many women organizations from time to time have demanded that family courts be set up because there are many cases of domestic violence and many cases where women are subjected to various kinds of crimes so these organizations have demanded even law commission has said that family court should be there which report law commission 59th report so the main objectives of the family court is to to create a specialized court to create a specialized court which deals exclusively with family matters so family matters exclusively dealt by these courts so it deals with conciliation i told you adr adr means alternate dispute resolution when it comes to lok adalat it is mediation when it comes to uh, family courts it is conciliation both the parties get consigned okay, consigned means so kind of, so, sort of agree or come together come together uh, agree to resolve the dispute so they also it also provides inexpensive remedy so what are the features features of family courts so family courts are established by which authority state government in consultation with which authority i court i court consult the government consults i court and establishes the family court so for every 10 lakh population one family court has to be there that is the condition okay so jurisdiction what are the jurisdiction of these courts matrimonial relief including uh, nullity of marriage nullifying the marriage that is cancelling the marriage judicial separation divorce and many other things property disputes of spouses and legitimacy of a person guardianship of children and many other things so so it is obligatory on the part so when you take the dispute to the family court first they advocate reconciliation that is uh, don't uh, go for divorce let us settle the matter let us reconcile so they try to counsel you so that is the first stage so when this this stage here social welfare agencies counselors are involved so here if the reconciliation doesn't say take place then then the court will give an order so that may be divorce or anything else okay so so here there is a no there is no provision for legal practitioner that is no provision of lawyer the parties themselves represent yes, okay so this is the concept this is the whole thing about family courts next we'll talk about gram nayalas gram nayalas the word, uh, word itself is self explanatory gram gram means village village courts village courts gram nayalas nayalas so gram nayalas we have gram nayalas act 2008 gram nayalas act 2008 okay so what does this act provide it acts this act provides for the establishment of gram nayalaya gram nayalayas at the grassroots level so that justice is delivered to the doorstep of the population so they need not come to the taluka or the district headquarters so the justice can be uh, delivered at the village level itself why gram gram nayalayas were set up when why were they set up so access to justice by the poor and disadvantaged that is the main reason so also article 39 39 a what does it say it says free and uh, free legal aid to the poor poor and disadvantaged so that is also a reason gram nayalayas were set up so uh, the law commission also has suggested the law commission report so you know what is law commission law commission means it is set up by the executive by from time to time to uh, renew or to 
give recommendations about the impending laws to give recommendations about new laws or also to reform old laws so with respect to this the uh, law commission gives timely recommendations to the government so the 114th report of the law commission as suggested gram nayalayas has to be set up so what are the features what are the features of this gram nayalayas what are the features so it, it shall be a jmfc court that is gram nayalaya shall be a jmfc court judicial magistrate of first class so the presiding officer is called what jmfc judge is called nyayadhikari nyayadhikari it is a hindi term nyayadhikari who one who delivers the justice so this is the term right okay next is so it is it shall be gram nyayalaya shall be established for every panchayat so we have gram sabha we have gram panchayat when it when it comes to local level governance we are going to discuss it in the same class yeah in the upcoming times okay so the gram nyayalaya shall be mobile court mobile court means what they move from village to village they don't have a permanent a uh, setup so they move from village to village and go on settling the disputes so uh, the headquarters will be in a suppose there are pi to some 30 to 40 villages one of the in one of the villages which is close to all the villages that is at the center spot the headquarters of the gram nyayalaya will be set up intermediate panchayat it is called intermediate panchayat so it is mainly set up at the taluk panchayat level so the headquarters of gram nyayalaya is mainly set up at the taluk panchayat level okay so the gram nyayalaya uh, uh, shall try even the criminal and petty civil suits petty criminal and civil suits can also be tried by gram nyayalayas okay so uh, the gram nyayalaya uh, follows summary trial in criminal criminal trial in criminal trial so what is summary procedure summary procedure in criminal trial so it means they don't uh, adjourn the dispute to some other day so they are going to hold the uh, hold the uh, session or hold the trial continuously without break and give the judgment that is with respect to criminal cases so the judgment the judgment passed by gram nyayalayas have the effect of a decree decree of a district court okay so here one more thing is there they are bound not bound by evidence act so we have indian evidence act which means this only these types of evidence as to are to be permitted in the law courts so the gram nyayalayas are not bound by evidence act rather they are bound by principles of natural justice okay so where does the appeal lies appeal lies to sessions court in the case of criminal case in the case of civil case it lies to the district court so establishment of gram nyayalayas establishment which are the uh, which are the states which have established the gram nyayalayas so the central government has given up to 18 lakhs for the setup of each gram nyayalaya so gram nyayalaya setting up the central government has given up to 18 lakhs so there are more than 5000 gram nyayalayas which have been set up more than 5000 gram nyayalayas which have been set up in various states after this Uh, after which act after gram nyayalayas act 2008 okay this is with respect to the concept of gram nyayalayas next we will move towards special provisions for some states so all the states we india is a asymmetric federalism not every state is treated equally before the abolition of article 370 
uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir had its own citizenship and also own constitution. So, this type of federalism is called as asymmetric federalism. So, where there is no symmetry, different states are treated differently. Okay. So, which are the, what is the constitutional provision? So, constitutional provision, article 20, part uh, 21 speaks of the constitutional provision and articles. Which article? Article 371 through to 371 J in uh, part 21. In part 21, article 371 to 371 J speaks about, speaks about special provisions for some states. So, which are these states? So, these are the states which have special provision. So, what is it with respect to Maharashtra and Gujarat? So, Article 371. So, 371 article itself speaks about uh, the special provision for Maharashtra and Gujarat. So, what does it say? It, uh, the article says, there is a separate development board for Vidarbha and Saurashtra and Kach region in Gujarat. Why separate development board? These are the comparatively less development areas. So, when you look at Western Maharashtra, that is Mumbai and surrounding areas, they are more developed. However, when you come to Vidarbha region or the Saurashtra and Kutch region of Gujarat, there is less development. That is, that is why the constitution allows for separate development boards for this region. Okay. So, Report on the working of the boards has to be placed before the state legislative assembly every year. Every year, report has to be placed. So, these are with respect to the uh, provision for Maharashtra and Gujarat. So, next, what is the provision for Nagaland? Nagaland, Article 371A. So, they are right now demanding Greater Nagalim as a separate country or a separate state within the uh, within India, in which, which involves uh, territories of many states. They want some territories from Assam, they want some territories from Arunachal, they want some territories from Mizoram as well. So, however, these states are opposed. So, that is why they are carrying out armed insurgency. Armed insurgency in which form they, we have NSCN, NSCN Kaplang, NSCN Kaplang. They are doing the terrorist attacks. Insurgency. Okay. 371A. What does it say? The acts of the parliament uh, relating to religious and social practices, Naga customary laws and also administration of civil and criminal justice and land transfer of land. So, in these four areas, the parliamentary laws are not applicable to Naga land. So, in these four areas, the parliamentary laws, acts of parliament are not applicable to Nagaland. It is said by which act? It is said by Article 371A. So, the governor of Nagaland has special responsibility. So, special represent responsibility for law and order in the state. This is a very highly disturbed state with respect to law and order. That is why the governor of Nagaland has uh, special responsibility when, is come, when it comes to law and order in the state with respect to uh, internal disturbances in the state. So, the governor has to ensure money provided by the uh, central government is included in the demand, of, demand for grant. You already know what is demand for grant, right? So, the central government provides money for the development of Nagaland that has to be in, in, included in the de demand for grant in the state budget. Okay, so the regional council, regional council consisting of 35 members has to be set up. A regional council consisting of how many members? 35 members has to be set up. So, which for which region? For Tuan Sang region. For Tuan Sang region. Tuan Sang region, a separate regional council has to be set up. Right? So, why? Maybe it is, it is a very uh, improvised province in the state. Okay. So, so, 
So in this Tuansang region has to be administered by whom? Uh, by the governor. So with the aid of this regional council. So with the aid of this regional council, it has to be administered by the governor. That council of minister doesn't of Nagaland doesn't have any authority with respect to the Tuansang region. So Nagaland legislature, any act passed by Nagaland legislature does not apply to Tuansang region and unless government governor governor extends that law to that region. Suppose Nagaland assembly passes a law, that law is not extended to extended to which region? Tuansang region unless governor specifically extends that act. And the governor can make regulations for the peace and progress of this region. Okay, there shall be a minister of Tuansang affairs in the Nagaland cabinet. So, these are the provisions with respect to Nagaland. Next is Assam and Manipur. Which act, which, uh, provi which article, article 371B speaks of Assam. Article 371C speaks of Manipur. B and C. So, it, uh, Article 371 majorly speaks about the tribal areas in the Assam. Tribal areas. How these tribal areas has to be safeguarded. That is what is spoken in uh, the Article 371B. Okay. So, for the safeguarding of the tribal areas, a committee has to be set up. A committee has to be set up where? In the Assam uh, Legislative Assembly. Le Assam Legislative Assembly out of the legislative assembly, a committee has to be set up for looking after the tribal affairs. Next comes Article 371C with respect to Manipur. So, here also a committee in the state legislative assembly as can be created. For which region? For hill regions. Hill regions. So, wherever hills are there for those regions, a committee and the MLAs from that particular region can form a, should form a committee. Okay. So, and also governor has special responsibility uh, with respect to functioning of this committee. Governor has special responsibility. And governor should uh, submit an annual report to the president. So, every year governor has to uh, submit a report to the president with respect to the functioning of hill areas, functioning of hill areas in the Manipur region. Okay, next comes the provisions for Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. So, Telangana was a new state. So, which is the article? Article 371 D speaks of Telangana, sorry, Andhra Pradesh and E speaks of Telangana. Right? Okay. So, what does this uh, articles denote? So, they denote that with respect to public employment, the president can make uh, opportunity, equal opportunities for all the uh, people with respect to public employment. The first uh, provision of this act, Article 371D and as well as E, uh, is Article 371D and E. What is that? It says, president is empowered to make E provide equal opportunities for the public in the matters of employment and education. Okay, that is the first provision. Next is, so, so uh, for this purpose, the president can make provisions, uh, may, may require the state government to organize civil posts. So, civil posts, uh, that is government posts, can be or has to be organized by the state government and uh, for th for those posts direct recruitment has to be enabled direct en recruitment from the local cadre that is only the local people can get into those civil posts no other person can get into that post so this is the provision with uh, only with respect to andhra pradesh right so with respect to disputes with respect to that civil post. So, I said civil post will be created. So, whenever there is dispute with respect to 
those civil posts. So, a tribunal, administrative tribunal has to be formed to deal with those disputes. Next is provision with respect to Sikkim. What is the provision with respect to Sikkim? Article 371 F speaks about the special provisions to Sikkim. So, what are the special provisions? So, the state legislation assembly should consist not less than 30 members. The state legislative assembly should consist not at least 30 members. That is the first provision. Okay. So, next provision is one Lok Sabha seat is allotted to Sikkim. One uh, Lok Sabha seat is allotted to Sikkim. That is also given in this provision. Article 371F. Okay. So, the governor has special responsibility with respect to maintenance of peace. The governor has special responsibility with respect to maintenance of peace in this region. Peace and for equitable arrangement and economic advancement. So, ad economic advancement and maintenance of peace. The governor has special responsibility. That is responsibility outside the council of ministers. He can act in his own discretion when it comes to Maintaining peace and as well as economic development. He need not take the aid and advice. Okay. This is with respect to Sikkim. Next is important provisions with respect to Mizoram. What are the provisions with respect to Mizoram? Which article speaks about it? Article 371G. 371G speaks about special provisions with respect to Sikkim, right? So, the Acts of Parliament, Parliament Act will not apply in these areas to Mizoram. What are the areas? Religious and social practices of Mizos. Mizos, Mizo are the population of Mizoram. So, religious and social practices of Mizoram, uh, the, the uh, Acts of Parliament will not apply to that state. And also, Mizo customary laws and procedure, Mizo's customary laws, that is traditional laws, there also parliamentary law will not apply. And also, uh, administration of civil and criminal justice, with respect, so there, there have, they have Mizo customary law, there also they have Mizo customary law, so this, uh, parliaments, civil and criminal laws won't apply. So, uh, till when they don't apply, till the state legislature, Mizoram state legislature extends. So, if the Mizoram state legislature wants to extend the parliamentary law to Mizoram uh, with respect to these three areas, that is customary laws uh, and also uh, uh, social practices and also criminal and civil matters, civil justice. If the legislative assembly wants, then only they can extend. And also it says, uh, it does not consist less than 40 members. It won't consist less than 40 members where? In the Mizoram legislative assembly. Okay. Provisions for Arunachal Pradesh and Goa. So, article 371 speaks about, 371H speaks about Arunachal Pradesh. What does Article 371H speaks about? Okay. So, the Governor of Arunachal Pradesh has special responsibility. The Governor of Arunachal Pradesh has special responsibility in order, special responsibility for law and order in the state. For maintenance of law and order in the state, the Governor of uh, the governor of Arunachal Pradesh has special responsibility. Okay. And also the Arunachal Pradesh uh, assembly will not consist of less than 30 members. That is also less than 30 members. That is also given in Article 371H. Goa. So, Goa Article 371I. So, here also what does it say? Not less than 30 members in the State Legislative Assembly that is said in Article 371I. So, provisions with respect to Karnataka. So, which is the article? Article 
371J, latest of all the articles. So, when was this enacted? The year 2012. In the year 2012, 371J was enacted with respect to the Hyderabad Karnataka region. So, suppose this is the Karnataka state. This region, this region is underdeveloped. This region is called Hyderabad Karnataka region. There, uh, there in order to uh, development, to provide for economic development, the state, the parliament has enacted Article 371J. So, what does the article speaks about? It speaks about provide establishment of a separate establishment of a separate development for board for Hyderabad Karnataka so separate development board for Hyderabad Karnataka that is the what is spoken by 371J and also the reports of the board the reports of the board will be placed before the state legislative assembly every year and also equitable allocation of funds equitable allocation of funds for the uh, developmental expenditure equitable allocation of the funds for developmental expenditure okay so reservation of seats in the educational institutions so reservation of seats in the uh, edu uh, educational institutions for uh, people belonging to this region and also even in government employment they have Hyderabad Karnataka reservation okay so this is with respect to article 371 J okay so we have spoken about special provisions for the state so next we will move to the very important concept UPSC's favorite concept Panchayati Raj that is local government. Okay. So, Gandhiji envisaged every village to be a republic, right? So, that is Local self-government, a village ruling itself, no higher authority, no authority from the higher end. So, so it has to, it has been established to build democracy at the grassroots grassroot level. To build democracy at the grassroot level, Panchayati Raj has been established. So, which is the Amendment Act. So, 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act, 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act, 1992, provides for establishment of the Panchayati Raj. We have District Panchayat, Taluk Panchayat, Village Panchayat. This is the hierarchy. So, how did this Panchayat Raj evolve? Via these committee reports, it has evolved over time. So, Balwant Rai Mehta Committee was the first committee which spoke about Panchayat Raj. So, what does it say? So, it was established in 1957. So, during that time, there was community development program which was given by, which was started by the government, central government, Indian government. So, community development program was started in the 1950s and to review that, this committee was formed. So, what did it say? It said, it said, it recommended democratic decentralization, that is adding one more tier of government. So, it said three tier Panchayati Raj, that is uh, Gram Panchayat, Jilla Panchayat and Block Level Panchayat. Three, le three level Panchayat has to be uh, established and it has to be uh, directly elected. The members have to be directly elected. All the planning should be done by this uh, uh, panchayat itself. Okay. These and district collector should be the chairman of Zilla Panchayat. These are certain 
recommendations of the Balwant Rai Mehta Committee. So after which Nago uh, Rajasthan was the first state to establish Panchayat Raj system. Rajasthan, so this fact is important from your prelims, preliminary perspective. Which state established the Panchayat Raj for the first time in India? It is the state of Rajasthan, right? So on October 2nd, 1959, in which district? The district of Nagaur. Nagaur. The district of Nagaur. Panchayati Raj was established for the first time in 1959 on Gandhiji's birthday. Okay. Next, there were many uh, Ashok Mehta committee. Next comes Ashok Mehta committee. So, what did this committee say? So, it was established in 1977. So, what did this committee say? So, the committee said three-tier Panchayati Raj system similar to Balwantrai Mehta committee. They also said three-tier system and also Zilla Parishad should be the executive body. That is, uh, that is the body, that is, Zilla Parishad should be the body which executes, which has executive power. So, with respect to planning, planning has to be formulated at the district level. Okay. So, they also said, this, com this uh, committee also said, political party should fight the election at the Panchayati Raj level. So, and also it speaks about social audit, uh, social audit of the projects at, the, uh, at all levels, ma majorly at the district level. And also it speaks about Nyaya Panchayat. So, we have we spoke about Gram Nyayalaya. So, Ashok Mehta committee had spoken about it in 1977. When did the Gram Nyayala Act pass? 2008. So, and also there should be a chief electoral officer of a state. So, for the conducting the uh, Panchayat election, there should be a chief electoral officer. Okay. Seats for SCs and STs should be reserved. And also Ashok Mehta committee said, con give constitutional recognition. This was the first committee which speaks about giving constitutional recognition to three-tier government. Okay. There were many study teams and committees in between. So, there are many study teams. So, few of the study teams are Committee on Rationalization of Panchayat Statistics, Working Group of Panchayats and Cooperatives and many other committees. So, these committees names are not very important. So, few of the committees were added by famous people like K. Santanam. So, study team on Panchayat Raj finances. So, he was added by K. Santanam. You can remember that one committee. Next comes GVK Rao committee. What did GVK Rao committee say? So, who established the GVK Rao committee? So, GVK Rao committee was established by planning commission which was abolished in 2014 and replaced by Niti Ayog. So, this planning commission uh, established the GVK Rao committee in 1985. What is the, what are the, so what are the, why was this committee established even though there were two committees. So, even after two committees had given recommendations, there was no, um, no improvement of a substantial level. So, they said the Panchayati Raj institution has become not a grassroots in institution but a grass without roots. That is, there was too much interference from the state government. So, what did this committee say? So, it lays emphasis on Zilla Parichar. That is, the central point of decentralization should be district level that is Zilla Parishad, Parishad that should be the point of decentralization ok so uh, the planning should be taken up at district level that is what this committee says so there should be a district development officer there should be a district development officer who says this it, it was said by the GVK Rao committee and also, by elections to this committee has to be held regularly. That was said by GVK Rao committee. 
So next comes uh, one more important committee, LM Singhvi committee. So out of these many committees, please remember few of the committees. You may remember Ashok Mehta committee, LM Singhvi committee, Dadgil committee. So three committees if you remember, more than sufficient. However, I am going to deal with all the committees in the significant depth so that you know which committee said what. So LM Singhvi committee, it was given, formulated by or established by Rajiv Gandhi government in 1986, just one year after GVK Rao committee was established. So what did LM Singhvi committee said? So first and foremost they said these uh, Panchayati Raj institutions should have constitutional status. That is the first thing. Next they said Nyaya Panchayat should be established. Two important recommendations. So they also said the panchayat should have taxation powers so that they become financially independent. So these are the three things said by LM Singhvi committee. Next we have Tungon committee. Tungon committee. What did Tungon committee say? So 1988 after two years, two years after LM Singhvi committee was established, Tungon committee was formulated, formed. So what did they say? They also repeat that the uh, Panchayati Raj should have constitutional status. So three tier system. They also say there should be three tier system. And they also lay emphasis on Jila Parishad should be the point of decentralization. So they, they also give the, the term five years should be the term just like state legislature, state legislature and parliament. They should also have five year tenure. And also they say reservation of seats for women. So this is the first committee which says about Reservation of seats for women in the Panchayati Raj. Today we have one third reservation for women in the Panchayati Raj and municipalities. That is why there is two very good representation. However, not at the level of state legislature and the uh, parliament because there is no reservation. 108 constitutional amendment bill which speaks about 33% reservation for women in the state legislative assembly and parliament is lying idle, not yet taken up. Okay. Tungon committee, this is, these are the few things. They also say there should be a separate state finance commission which formulates uh, division of resources, division of resources between state government and the panchayats. So this is, these are the important recommendations of Tungon committee. Next comes important committee before constitutionalization. Gadgil committee. What does Gadgil? VN Gadgil. So, in the same year, in the same year Tungan committee was formulated, 1988, even Gadgil committee was formulated. So, two committees. This shows there is an evolution. The difference between GVK Rao to LM Singhvi, LM Singhvi to Tungan and Gadgil is going on reducing. However, here we see 10 to 10, 20 years gap. So, there, this shows there was an urgent need for setting up of the Panchayati Raj. So what does Gadgil committee say? First, constitutional status. Second, three tier Panchayati Raj, same. And also five years uh, tenure, same. And also, uh, they, uh, this committee gives one important recommendation saying that all the at all the levels there should be direct election so mlas and mps are elected directly right similarly here also there should be direct election said by whom gadgil committee and also these uh, gadgil committee also says the panchayat raj body should have power to uh, uh, impose taxes and duties taxes and duties. So, they also say there should be establishment of state finance commission. Next is the constitutionalization. Constitutionalization. So, giving constitutional status to Panchayati Raj system. So, this was first attempted by whom? First attempted by Rajiv Gandhi 
government. However, the bill did not pass because the opposition opposed the bill. Right? Sorry. Next comes VP Singh government. VP Singh government, they also did not pass the bill because there was opposition. So, which government? National Front government. So, what was the opposition when uh, VP Singh sir tried to uh, uh, try to uh, bring this constitutional amendment bill for uh, the uh, constitutionalization of Panchayati Raj? So, it was not passed in the Rajya Sabha. So, it was not passed in the Rajya Sabha. So, uh, that is even before it was passed, the government fell. So, this government lived for a very short tenure, right? Le around one year or less than one year. So, because of which uh, the constitutional amendment before being placed in the parliament, the government fell. However, the constitutional status was given by Congress government headed by Narsimha Rao, P.V. Narsimha Rao, sir. So, what is the Constitutional Amendment? 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act. 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1992. 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act 1992. Constitutional Amendment Act 1992. Right? Okay. So, uh, the, uh, what did this act do? This act added new part, part 9 to the constitution. Part 9 was added by 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act. And articles, new articles were added. Which were the articles? Article 243 to 243O. These many articles were added. This is not 0, this is O. Right? Look like a theta. Okay. Okay. So, in addition, the act also added one more schedule. So, one new part was added. These many articles were added. One more schedule. Which is the schedule? 11th schedule. You can remember. If you put this uh, symbol one this side, it becomes the new part. If you put the symbol this side, it becomes the new schedule which was added right so what is the significance of this amendment act so 40th constitutional 40th dpsp 40th article what does it say it says village panchayat so that was implemented say self government and also it gives constitutional status so till then it was the prerogative of the state either to form the uh, either to form the uh, Panchayati Raj or not. However, now constitutionally it is mandated that Panchayats has to be formed. Next is, so, so there are many provisions under this. So, there are compulsory provisions as well as voluntary provisions. What are the compulsory provisions? So, voluntary provisions uh, means so, that it is left to the states either to implement. So, it is one of the voluntary provision is uh, that the states can either give representation for the socially and economically backward classes. Uh, the reservation for socially and economically backward classes is one of the voluntary provision. Pancha, pa, compulsory provision, reservation for women is a compulsory provision. Right? Okay. What are the salient features? Salient features of the act. So, first of all, Gram Sabha. Gram Sabha forms the foundation of this amendment. So, Gram Sabha means what? In a village, every elector who is eligible to vote forms the part of this Gram Sabha. Right? It is a foundation. Every elect, uh, every person registered on the electoral, electoral rolls of a village forms the part of the Gram Sabha. Next is three-tier system. What are the three-tier Three tiers, district level, intermediate level, village level. Three tier system is established. Next is election of members and chairpersons. 
how the members and chairpersons are elected right so district village and intermediate that is taluka level there is direct election direct election okay so the chairperson of a panchayat and other members are elected directly so the chairperson of a panchayat at village level at the village level so village level so whenever they ask a question on panchayat raj please make this diagram in the mains so it fetches you one extra mark district level taluk level village level so village level chairperson is appointed or elected or uh, nominated by any provision by how the state uh, legislature provides so how the chairman is elected at the village village panchayat it is based on state legislature law however taluk pan, uh, panchayat and district la panchayat uh, the chairman is elected indirectly not directly the chairman is elected indirectly okay so reservation of seats the act provides for reservation of seats for whom scheduled caste scheduled tribe in the panchayat raj and also for women even in the uh, case of chairman even in the seat of chairman there is reservation okay so voluntary provision backward classes can also be given reservation okay next is duration of panchayats for how long uh, this uh, panchayats exist so the like the state legislature and parliament one second okay so like the state legislature and parliament there are the duration is 5 years so however it can be dissolved before the 5 uh, years however it can be dissolved before the 5 years by the state legislature so if it is dissolved within 6 months a new election has to be conducted right okay before uh, before 6 months new election has to be conducted disqualification of members so recently haryana haryana uh, state legislature formulated a law so the law on direct democracy that is recalling of the representatives suppose some representative is convicted of corruption or some illegal activities so the uh, people of gram sabha come together or the panchayat level come together they vote vote by more than there is a specified percentage 50 or 60 percent if the vote get passed that person stands cancelled that is he loses its seat so what is the uh, provision for disqualification so disqualification provisions are made from by states from state to state disqualification provision differs right so the the disqualification is based on the laws made by the state legislature next comes state election commission so we have central election commission right likewise there is a state election commission which deals which deals exclusively with the panchayat and municipality election so there shall be a state election commission and also a state election commissioner right so he shall not be the removed uh, removed except on the grounds like a state judge of a high court so state election commissioner can only be removed similar to a high court judge that is only the parliament can remove not the state authority okay powers and functions powers and functions of the panchayat raj system so the state legislature provides for the powers and functions so who provides for the powers and functions it is the state legislature which provides for the uh, powers and functions first uh, so some of the powers may be so the preparation of plan for economic development and social justice that is one of the function and also 
implementation of schemes for economic development and social justice that is also one of the function okay finances what is the finance so the state legislature can authorize so the state legislature can authorize the panchayat to collect or levy tax tax duties tolls so the state legislature can authorize the panchayat okay and also uh, the state government that is uh, out of the consolidated fund of the state grants can be made to the state legislature grants can be made to the state legislature so finance commission with for the panchayat raj system there is a separate finance commission so it shall be constituted after every 5 years so what uh, what should be the function of this finance commission the distribution of resources between the state and the panchayats distribution just like central finance commission state finance commission uh, what does it do Distribu distribution of resources between state and panchayats right so determination of taxes duties and tolls determination of taxes duties and tolls and also grants in aid grants what are the grants that the state government must give to the what are the grants the state government must give to the panchayat that is also determined and also they, they give recommendations with respect to how the financial financial position of the panchayat can be improved panchayat's financial position if it is not good how it has to be improved will be said by the state uh, finance commission okay audit and account the state legislature can provide for audit and account of the accounts of the panchayat application to union territories so the president can the president can apply extend these provisions to the even to the union territories so exempted states and areas there are certain states and uh, areas which are exempted by from the 73rd amendment act which are the uh, states nagaland meghalaya mizoram and also scheduled areas and tribes in these states so these are certain areas where uh, the hill areas in manipur darjeeling district in west bengal these areas are exempted from this panchayati raj system right so to schedule areas and uh, tribal areas there is a provision for pisa act pisa p e s a so that is extending the panchayati raj system to uh, the schedule areas and tribal areas so normal areas panchayati raj system applies however schedule areas and tribal areas schedule areas and tribal areas what do you mean by that at uh, schedule 5 and schedule 6 so schedule 5 speaks about schedule areas and schedule tribes right so article uh, schedule uh, schedule 6 speaks about tribal areas okay so to that if you have if we have to extend the panchayati raj system it is which act it is the pisa act we will discuss that in in, in a short while okay so next is bar on int, bar to interference by courts in electoral so in the electoral proceedings whatever happens the courts cannot interfere okay with respect to uh, the elections of panchayats the courts cannot interfere <laughs> sorry 11 schedule so i said 11 schedule was added so what are the items under 11 schedule there are 29 functional items 29 items just like union list state list so this schedule 11 gives 29 items to the panchayat what are the 29 items agriculture land improvement minor irrigation fisheries social forestry minor forest produce rural housing drinking water so on so just remember few of the points that is more than sufficient next is i said there are certain compulsory provisions and certain voluntary provisions what are the compulsory provisions and what are the voluntary provisions okay compulsory provision organization of grama sabha gram sabha that is a compulsory provision 
establishment of panchayats at all the levels compulsory provision indirect elections to chairperson uh, post of chairperson compulsory provision okay 21 years to be the minimum age so say mla election what is the minimum age 25 years mp election 25 years panchayat election 21 years that is a compulsory for provision reservation of seats for women scs sts compulsory provision likewise there are many compulsory provision okay what are the voluntary provisions voluntary provision means the uh, it is uh, done by the discretion so the state can either implement it or may not implement it so what are the voluntary provisions okay so what are the voluntary provisions determining the manner manner of election of chairperson of i said village panchayat chairperson uh, depends on the state law so that is a voluntary provision state can uh, provide any manner of election next is uh, providing reservation of seats to backward classes that is also a voluntary provision and also devolution of powers to panchayats and prepare plans that is also voluntary provisions so devolution of powers so the state if it, if it wishes if it can devolve the powers and also planning powers granting financial powers to panchayats voluntary provision it need not be mandatory and also making grants in aid to the panchayats panchayats money would be granted to the panchayats from the state so that is a voluntary provision state if it wishes it can do if it doesn't wish it need not do so now we will speak about the most important act pisa act 2017 there was a question in the mains right so pisa act uh, is for, is uh, forms part of which part of constitution part 9 part 9 of the constitution okay so part 9 of the constitution does not apply to panchayats when in the fifth schedule areas there are fifth schedule areas in the upcoming classes i am going to discuss what are the fifth schedule areas okay in the fifth schedule areas the uh, panchayat system is the part 9 that is panchayat system is not going to be applicable so how to apply to these uh, states that is uh, Uh, what is the in the schedule areas how to apply the panchayat system how to apply the panchayat system in the schedule areas why are this act pisa act panchayat extension to panchayat extension to schedule areas act of 1996 okay so what is the objective of pisa act so to extend part 9 to schedule areas that is the main objective uh, to provide self rule for the tribal population so tribal population the uh, pisa act provides self rule so there are two types of land one is revenue land another is tribal land so it is said that this pisa act brings the tribal land into revenue administration revenue administration means what tribal administration means what under their own administration the state government doesn't have any authority revenue administration means the revenue department has an authority the revenue minister has an authority that is the tahsildars and district collectors have authority over 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 what over the tribal land this pisa act ensures that okay next is uh, we are discussing about the objectives it provides for self rule of the tribal population okay that is one thing next is so it makes gram sabha a nucleus of all activities a center point of all activities it evolves suitable administrative system to, uh, with the is consistent with traditional practices so tribal areas has many uh, traditional practices so this pisa act evolves administrative system which is consistent with 
which is consistent with tribal administration. Okay, next we will discuss some of the features. What are the features of the Pizza Act? So, the state legislation on panchayats in scheduled areas. So, the features of the Pizza Act are, suppose a state forms a legislation on the panchayats in scheduled areas. So, uh, in scheduled areas, Pizza does what? Extends the panchayats to scheduled areas, right? So, if the state forms a law, it has to be in consonance with the customary law. So, that is customary law, tribal laws, these uh, state laws should be matching or it should not breach the boundary of customary law. So, the village shall, it also gives the, the features, it also gives the definition of a village, definition of what is a tribal village that is uh, given by Pizza Act. So, the Pizza Act also says uh, about the every village should have a Gram Sabha, every village should have a Gram Sabha that is given by Green, uh, that is given by Pizza Act. So, every Gram Sabha should do certain functions. What are the functions? It should preserve the traditions, customs of their people. That is also given in the Pizza Act. So, Gram Sabha also does certain other functions. What are the functions? It approves the plans, programs and projects of social and economic development. Plans, projects of, uh, for social and economic development. Utilization of funds. So, every panchayat at the level, village level uh, should obtain a, obtain from the Gram Sabha a certification of utilization of funds. Okay. Funds are granted to the uh, village uh, Gram Sabha, right? So, uh, to utilize these funds, th there will be, so you, what is the difference between Gram Sabha and Gram Panchayat? Gram Sabha involves all the voters. Everyone in the village are part of Gram Sabha. Whereas, Gram Panchayat is those who are elected, those who are elected to the village Panchayat, they form the Gram Panchayat. So, this Gram Panchayat utilizes the funds, right? So, they should uh, utilize the fund with the consent of Gram Sabha. So, it is a measure of direct democracy. Okay. So, these are the some of the features of Pizza Act. Okay, next is financing of Panchayat Raj. How the finances are made? Okay, the second administrative reforms commission. Who was the chairman? Former Chief Minister of Karnataka, Virappa Mohli ji, was the chairman of second ARC. So, what is uh, this second ARC say about the financing? So, it says, structural empowerment of Panchayat Raj institutions, how via grants from union government. So, union government should also give grants to the Panchayat Raj institutions. That is what is said by the second administrative commission. Also, devolution from the state government. So, state government should also give funds to the Panchayat Raj institution. And also, loans from the state government to Panchayat Raj institution. The second ARC speaks about that. Okay. So, it says that across the country, across the country, uh, many states have not given, done sufficient financial devolution. So, may not, may not many uh, states have done sufficient financial devolution, that is financial power is concentrated in the state government. These panchayat institutions doesn't have any financial or many major financial power. That is what is said by the second administrative uh, commission. So, so there are, uh, uh, it says there are many weaknesses in the finances of Panchayat Raj institutions. That is what is pointed out by Second Administrative Commission. Okay. Okay, next is. So, it gives a elaborate description of the finances of Panchayati Raj. So, 
uh, what is the condition of finance so is there sufficient finance at the panchayati raj so if not what should be done the everything is spoken about by the second administrative commission so the, uh, majorly it focuses on what are the problems okay reasons for ineffective performance what are the reasons for ineffective performance of panchayati raj lack of adequate devolution so whenever panchayati raj system comes this diagram is important and one more term term is important 3f 3f means funds functions and functionaries functions func funds money functions means work functionary means workers these three terms are important okay so lack of effective devolution that is the first reason for effect non effective ineffective performance of panchayati raj institutions next is excessive control of bureaucracy bureaucracy exercises disproportionate control over pris next is tied nature of funds that is uh, you do certain things then only you will get certain funds that is so the funds are based on performance that is also a reason overwhelming dependency on government funding so the panchayat raj institutions depends on the government funding that is also a drawback next is so creation of parallel bodies so with respect to at the district level there is district panchayat there is there are also district collector and various other authorities so they exercise disproportionate power next is poor infrastructure there is no good infrastructure for this panchayat raj institutions okay so we have finished the chapter on panchayat raj system so uh, what are the important articles the article majorly which deals with is 243 it goes up to 243 o 243 o okay so panchayat raj institutions and evolution so the in suppose if uh, there are there are three level panchayats there are also two level panchayats so for example manipur has two level panchayats what are the true levels gram panchayat zila panchayat even sikkim has two levels however up ups three levels gram panchayat kshetra panchayat zila panchayat karnataka also has gram panchayat taluk panchayat and zila panchayat three levels okay evolution of panchayat raj institutions so first generation evolution so there are many generation of panchayats so three generations two generations plus one constitution constitutional generation one is towards first generation first generation we have this community development program we have balwant rai mehta committee and also um first uh, panchayat raj started on in rajasthan that forms the first generation so you have to write there are many generations so there are first generation these three points if you write more than sufficient next is second generation panchayats so second generation panchayats we have west bengal forms panchayat system ashok mehta committee comes karnataka forms uh, new uh, panchayat raj act In 1983, Andhra Pradesh Forms Act. So this forms the second generation. So third is uh, constitutionalization of Panchayat Raj. So constitutionalization we have L M Singh V Committee, we have Tungon Committee, we have Gadgil Committee, and various con uh, so two constitutional amendment acts forms the constitutionalization of Panchayati Raj. Okay. so this is with respect to your panchayati raj system next municipalities so the chapter on panchayats are very important however municipalities can be of lesser importance okay evolution of urban bodies how urban bodies evolved in india
सो अर्बन लोकल गवर्नमेंट सो देर आर सो यू नो वॉट इज अर्बन लोकल गवर्नमेंट इन बैंगलोर वी हैव बी बी एम पी इन ऑल्सो इन मुंबई वी हैव ए सपरेट मुंबई मुंसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन एम एम आर डी समथिंग आई डोंट रिमेम्बर द नेम सो वॉट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ देर आर एट टाइप्स ऑफ अर्बन लोकल गवर्नमेंट वॉट आर द एट टाइप्स मुंसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन मुंसिपालिटी नोटिफाइड एरिया कमिटी टाउन एरिया कमिटी एंड कंटोनमेंट बोर्ड टाउनशिप्स पोर्ट ट्रस्ट एक्सेट्रा सो विच इज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट वेन इट कम्स टू मुंसिपालिटीज इट इज सेवेंटी फोर्थ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सेवेंटी फोर्थ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ओके so who who has control over this which ministries so ministry of urban affairs majorly in case of cantonments it is ministry of defense so even i said cantonment boards cantonment boards who governs it is the ministry of defense in the with respect to union territory urban bodies it is ministry of home affairs this difference is important from your prelims perspective evolution of urban bodies evolution of urban bodies how did urban bodies evolve in india historically first municipal corporation in india 1688 where did it set up madras madras in 76 1726 municipal corporation in mumbai So that is Bombay and Calcutta. Next is 1870 Lord Mayor's Resolution. Lord Mayor Resolution. Lord Ripon's Resolution. Lord Ripon's Resolution. When does it come? 1882. Next, 1907. There is a Royal. So Mayor Resolution and Ripon's Resolution. Both of them speaks about. so we'll discuss that in in the topic on history in the history chapters so both of them speak about urban local government next we have royal commission on decentralization there is a uh, uk committee british committee which comes to india which speaks about which speaks about decentralization royal commission on decentralization also we have diaric diarchy in 1919 there this uh, local self government becomes a transferred subject okay so 1935 act local self government was made a provincial subject that is under the state governments okay so historical person committees and commissions what were the committee just like all those committees here also we have many committees however the committees in uh, municipalities are not very important so in 1989 rajiv gandhi government tries to introduce a bill for constitutionalizing of urban local bodies urban local government so first we look at uh, Uh, then even national front government by v p singh sir also tries to constitutionalize however who does it finally it is p v narsim rao ji so 74th constitutional amendment act was enacted so what are the committees and commissions so i said committees and commissions are not very important however you can remember one committee charles korea committee you know this uh, he is a urban designer who passed away some 5 6 years back charles korea committee on national commission of urbanization so this one committee uh, 1985 if you remember this one code this one committee that is more than sufficient so 74th amendment act 1990 Two. What does it say? Which part of Article this? Which part of the Constitution it belongs to? It belongs to 
पार्ट नाइन ए सो पंचायती राज सिस्टम बिलोंग्स टू पार्ट नाइन दिस बिलोंग्स टू पार्ट नाइन ए सो विच आर द आर्टिकल्स सो पंचायत राज एंड सेट टू फोर्टी थ्री वो दिट्स दिस बिगिन्स फ्रॉम टू फोर्टी थ्री पी एंड गोज अप टू टू फोर्टी थ्री जेड जेड सो दे इट ऑल्सो कंटिन्यूस आफ्टर जेड राइट जेड जी सो आफ्टर जेड जेड ए जेड बी जेड बी जेड सी अप टू जेड जी सो इट गोज अप टू जेड जी ओके सो सेवेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट एक्ट सेवेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट एक्ट गिवस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल स्टेटस टू दिस दिस म्युनिसिपालिटीज ओके व्हाट इज द सैलियंट फीचर्स सैलियंट फीचर्स ऑफ सेवेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट एक्ट सो इट क्रिएट्स थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ म्युनिसिपालिटीज इन एवरी स्टेट एवरी स्टेट देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ म्युनिसिपालिटीज वॉट आर द थ्री टाइप्स ओके सो द फर्स्ट टाइप इज नगर पंचायत फॉर ए ट्रांसिशनल एरिया दट इज ए स्मॉलर अर्बन एरिया विच इज ट्रांसिशनिंग इन टू ए अर्बन एरिया फॉर दट नगर पंचायत Municipal Council for a smaller urban area. Smaller urban area, Municipal Council. Municipal Corporation for a larger urban area, for a big area, it is Municipal Corporation. Okay. So, how does this areas are determined? So, they are determined on the population, density of population, revenue generated. Uh, percentage of employment in agricultural activities on these the criteria the types of urban government are determined okay next is what is the composition what is the composition of this municipalities right so there is direct election right there is direct election there is no provision of indirect elections hmm so for this purpose each municipal area shall be divided into wards so suppose there is one municipal area there are divided into many wards like this there are ward committees also okay so representation of following persons in the persons in the municipalities in the wards there are many in the municipality many special categories of persons are represented so so who are the persons persons having special knowledge in municipal administration members of lok sabha and state legislative assembly rajya sabha local mlcs they can also be represented in the municipalities so ward committees every ward there will be one ward committee what is a ward committee consists of one or more wards so it is not for one exclusive ward it can be for more wards also it can be for one ward also it can be for more wards also one or more wards so having a population of 3 lakh or more so what is the composition the composition depends on the law made by the state legislature so whatever the law made by the state legislature based on that these committees are formed okay reservation of seats like in the panchayats here also we have reservation for scs we have reservation for sts we have one third reservation for women also also the uh, state government voluntarily can provide for reservation for backward classes as well so duration of municipalities what is the duration the duration is just like panchayat raj state legislative assembly and also the parliament it is 5 years okay so if it is dissolved before 5 years the election has to be conducted within how many months 6 months okay so disqualification disqualification so disqualification is based on the what similar to panchayat raj based on the law made by the disqualified law made by the state legislature with respect to 
with respect to uh, parliament and state legislature we have what representation of people act rpa 1951 right with respect to with respect to panchayats and municipalities state legislature forms their own law okay so there is a state election commission to conduct the elections there is a separate state election commissioner and state election powers and functions what are the powers and functions so the state uh, government the state legislature sorry state legislature can endow the can give the can give the municipalities with such powers and authorities as it may deem necessary it is the prerogative of the state legislature to devolve the powers so uh, these powers are two of two nature what are the powers and functions so one is planning planning for economic development and social justice next is implementation of schemes for economic development for economic development certain schemes are implemented that is also falls as a function of the municipalities next is finances the state legislature can authorize the municipalities to collect taxes and also it can also assign assay, sorry assign certain taxes out of its consolidated fund of state it can say this percentage goes to municipalities so also it can give grants in aid certain grants based on state finance commission okay we have a state finance commission similar to panchayat raj so it speaks of Uh, the distribution of revenue for municipalities determination of taxes uh, and tolls which that may be collected by the municipalities the measures needed to improve the uh, financial position of municipalities and also how much grants in aid need to be given for the municipalities okay so even the central finance commission also says what are the measures needed to uh, strengthen the finances of the municipalities so audits audit of accounts will be done of the uh, municipalities and the president can apply this to municipality act to even union territories that is also there so here one uh, special category is there not seen in the panchayats so what is it district planning committee so district planning committee every state shall constitute at a district level a district planning committee to consolidate the plans prepared by panchayats and municipalities so district planning committee consists of members from both panchayats and municipalities so it consists of members from both panchayats and municipalities okay so what are the functions of this district planning committee so they found found out the so they plan they plan for the district that is the primary function next is how to augment the resources how to find resources for the district that is also the work of them and also matters of common interest for municipality and panchayat so uh, municipality is also there in a district and panchayat is also there what are the matters of common interest to both so that is also is the function of the so finding out that is also function of the district planning committee so majorly what you have to remember it consists of members from panchayats and as well as municipalities okay metropolitan planning committee metropolitan planning committee metropolitan area that is the areas like bengaluru delhi okay so so here also it consists of both uh, members of uh, municipalities as well as chairmen of panchayats it consists of members it consists of members of municipalities as well as so here one special dif uh, difference is there when it comes to district planning committee district planning committee panchayats and municipality members uh, municipal metropolitan planning committee 
municipality members plus chairmen of the panchayats not the members chairmen of the panchayats will be the members of municipality planning committee so what are the functions so they formulate a plan that is for the metropolitan area that is the first function second is argument the resources that is the second function so, and third is the find common areas of interest for working so nafor and also argumenting resources that is also there and also finding common areas of interest that is also the work of this metropolitan planning committee okay next is uh, we, uh, next comes with respect to municipality elections courts are barred from intervention courts cannot intervene in the elections of the uh, municipalities 12th schedule 12th schedule what does it speak about 12th schedule what does it speak about so we have 11th schedule for panchayats 12th schedule for municipalities it has how many items under it it has 18 items how many items are there in 11th schedule 29 items here we have 18 items what are the 18 items few of them you may know urban planning land use roads and bridges water supply public health fire services urban forestry and many other things okay next is types of urban government types of urban urban governments in india first is municipal corporation so municipal corporation are created for big cities delhi mumbai kolkata chennai bengaluru so these areas have municipal corporation so municipal corporation has how many authorities it has three authorities council standing committee and commissioner so council is council consists of councillors councillors elected from the wards so they form the part of the council and also there, there is a mayor the council a council elects a mayor whose tenure is for one year okay so standing committee are created to facilitate the working of the council just like parliament has parliamentary standing committees this council have standing committee which deliberate which are act as deliberative bodies small small chunks small small bodies they act as deliberative bodies next there is a municipal commissioner okay next is municipality next is municipality what does this municipality it is a smaller version of municipal corporation so it is administration of towns and smaller cities towns and smaller cities okay municipality consists of three authorities what similarly similar to the municipal corporation what are the three authorities first is council second is standing committee third is chief executive officer there we have commissioner here we have chief executive officer so the council is a deliberative body you know that wards councillors come there so it is headed by a president or chairman corporation mayor here president or chairman standing committees are created similar chief executive officer next is notified area committee so notified area committee notified means who notifies it it is a fast developing town due to industrialization notified area committee is a fast developing town due to what due to industrialization okay okay so it is established on the notification by the government gazette that is why it is called a notified area area so state government notifies the area by a government gazette that is when gazette means what it is a official document of the government so if uh, if the area is notified by the gazette it is called a notified area committee so uh the so the, uh, what, what authority rules the notified area committee so here there is a council 
which is entirely nominated body there is no election notified area committee members all all the members of the committee are nominated there is no election okay there is no uh, elected body it is a nominated body next is town area committee next we will speak about town area committee what is town area committee so it is created for administration of a small town small town administration is created by a created for created uh, which authority town area committee okay so it may be wholly elected or wholly nominated may be wholly elected committee or a wholly nominated committee next comes cantonment boards which is under the ministry of defense so it is so cantonment board there even in cantonment area there is civilian population right so to administer the civilian population cantonment boards are enacted so there is an act which act cantonment act 9 2006 cantonment act okay so there are present 62 cantonment boards 62 cantonment boards so these boards are partly elected and partly nominated so the commanding officer the military commanding officer of the station acts as the chairman of the board so the vice president is elected by the elected members so the vice president is elected by the elected members so partly elected partly nominated the elected members nominate the or elect the vice president so it is uh, it functions similar to the municipality but in a cantonment area next is the township township majorly where industrial area we have Kud we had kudremukh township when mining was happening there so there is a uh, it is a type of urban government established by large public enterprise a uh, large public enterprise you have bilai steel plant we have tisco and all those steel plants there these townships are created and these townships so there there will be a administrator for the township so so these so this township provides civic communities civic amenities that is water supply electricity and everything to the residents of the township who heads it it is a town administrator next comes port trust so we have jawalal nehru port marma marmagaon Marma port visakhapatnam port tutikorin port in these ports major ports how many ports major ports 12 ports so uh, this port trust is established to manage the and protect the ports and also to provide civic amenities manage the ports provide civic amenities recently there was act 2019 or 20 major ports act current affairs okay next comes special purpose agency special purpose agency so in addition to this seven area based so these are area based um, uh, urban bodies right this whatever i spoke about till now so there are special purpose our bda bscom bwssb all these are special purpose body bda means bangalore development authority bscom for electricity bwssb for water supply all these are special purpose body the type of special purpose bodies are town improvementers urban development authorities water supply and sewerage boards housing boards uh, pollution control boards and other such bodies municipal personnel so municipal personnel who are the persons working so there is separate there are many types of personal system that is uh, worker system so separate personnel so in some states there is separate personnel mun separate municipal worker workers cadre okay unified personal system in in the states like karnataka there is unified personnel system sorry not in karnataka in the tamil nadu there is a unified personnel system that is so there is a so uh, 
what uh, we have to understand unified personal system in difference with the a separate personal system. Under this system, each local body appoints its own personal. Bangalore local body, Bangalore personal. So, Mangalore local body, Mangalore Mysore, Mysore personal. Where are unified personal system? So, whole Karnataka municipal bodies uh, together uh, hire the personnel. They can be transferred from one municipality to another municipality. Another kind of system is integrated personal system. Here, the state government employees come to municipality working area, municipal corporation, municipal corporation employees can also go to work and work in state administration. This is integrated personal system. There are many institutes of so-called self-government. So, we have All India Institute for Local Self-Government, certain institutes and Regional Center for Urban and Environmental Studies, a National Institute for Urban Affairs. These are certain institutions. Municipal Revenue. So, municipal revenue, what are the kinds of revenue? One is the tax revenue. What are the kinds of tax revenue? Property tax, entertainment tax, advertisement tax. We see this advertisement, big, big advertisement holding. So, they, the taxes go to municipality, BBMP in Karnataka. Water tax, lighting tax, market tax and many other taxes. So, non-tax revenues. Non-tax revenues means, so, fines. So, BBMP marshals impose fine when you don't wear masks, right? That fine goes to non-tax revenue. And rent on municipal parties, uh, municipal properties, we have BDA complexes, science places. So, the uh, people who rent it out, pay the rent. That also is a non-property, non-tax revenue. Next, we have profits and dividends and interest and other things. Grants. The central government and state government provides grants. That is also revenue. Dev devolution. Devolution means the state government gives certain per percent of its revenue to the municipalities. That is also revenue. Loans. So, these municipality, municipal corporations get loans. So, from various authorities, from state governments majorly the, and also financial institutions. That also forms part of its revenue. So, here one concept, current affairs. Municipal bonds, muni bonds. So, we have Pune Municipal Corporation which has enacted municipal bonds. Next, we have Central Council of Local Government. So, it is a, it was a, set up in 1954, constituted under which act? Constituted under Article 263, Interstate Council. So, this council, what does it do? So, it tries to, it tries to propagate self-government. It tries to propagate self-government. So, it is a, council is an advisory body. Under, it is an advisory body. Not, it, recommendations are not compulsory. So, under which, which ministry? Ministry of Urban Development. The council performs following functions. What are the functions? Recommends policy matters. Making proposal for legislation, examining the possibility of cooperation between center and states and many other, recommending central financial assistance and many other works. Okay, what are the articles? I already said article 243P to 243P, 243ZG. So, until, uh, till, till those articles, it is important. Name of urban, urban local bodies. So, in, suppose in the case of Andhra Pradesh, we have municipal corporations, municipalities and Nagar Panchayats, three levels. So, in the case of Goa, only two levels, municipal corporation, municipal councils. In Karnataka, city corporation, city council, town panchayat. In Tamil Nadu, municipal corporation, municipality and town panchayat. Different states have different law culture. Okay, we will today end the class with the municipalities. Tomorrow, we will pick up union territories and other things. We have still two more days of polity left. I have still many parts to cover. That is, uh, we have majorly constitutional and non-constitutional bodies and some areas of the state government, still some areas. That is, union territories and schedule areas. Those have to cover. Okay, hope you found the class useful. Make Please make good use of it for your revision and clearing of the concepts. If you have any doubts, 
please do reach us through our telegram channel i provided the link in the beginning of the class and i hope you enjoyed the class thank you jai hind namaste